sorry for the delay yeah so thanks everyone to joining us today's pod webinar my name is aaron samuel i'm from spring people as a pod webinar series we are glad to have chief architect for corporate services of solution ibm if you have any questions during the session please type in the question in the question box during the end session q and a session mr vishal will answer all the questions now over to mr vishal hello uh, good afternoon everyone this is vishal chahal here um i'm going to take a webinar on how do you actually train a robot using ai to show some behavior which is driven by machine learning and data science behind it now in order to do that let's start the video to actually show you the robot that i'm talking about so here we go uh, so i hope you guys can see the robot aaron at least you can probably confirm to me on the call that you can see the robots mr vishal we can see it okay good thanks uh, so that's that's the robot and let me just share my screen as well as to what i'm going to be showing you today okay here we go so you you seeing multiple things there so you see uh, what you will see is a robo and then obviously uh, i'm going to give you a different view as well as to how the robo is seen so one is a webcam which is showing you how the robo is behaving and the other is as to how robo is seeing the world around it so let me start that so this this is a web app i've designed to actually control this robo i'm going to talk about the robo but um, let's just show you this so you see that you see me sitting i'm just waving my hand at the robo so you have multiple views here right there you go so what what we're going to do this this robo is called now robo Uh, what we're going to do is essentially make it more a little bit more intelligent um, with with the help of AI, induce AI in such a way that its behavior towards humans um, is is uh, is something of a machine learning or a data science driven kind of a thing. Now, now what what does differentiate this robot from other robots is this is a humanoid robot, such that it is supposed to be um, talking to uh, humans. It's supposed to be socializing with them. uh it's supposed to be helping us as humans um in in its current uh, form but uh more importantly when you actually have a robot it it is nothing but a machine in this specific case it is a, a linux machine um and it has motors inside which is actually representing the movement of its hands neck uh, um legs um you know the torso etc the important part is when it is uh, running as a machine how does it know what it needs to do given a situation so we define those things as behaviors so behavior can be programmed but you cannot program a behavior for all the different situations so let me show you a demonstration of what i mean by that so let's do one thing now the robo is standing now what if um, i make the robo fall down let's see what it does in that situation right so Let me just walk up. Take off its wire. I guess you guys can see that it's trying to do different actions to to get up. Okay, there you go. It's trying to get up. So it falls again. Okay, it realizes that it's. You see that, again, it's doing some action to make sure that it can balance itself, even though it's making all kind of noises as if it's doing a lot of effort. But there we go, it sits down. Okay, there you go. You can see it's sitting down. Now it's going to try and get up again. I'm going to let me let me go and catch it up, just so that I can bring it to a. better situation or a position what i can't go back on my feet i will have to wait for it until someone helps 
So I made it sit down, but more importantly, what the robo was doing at that point of time was, it was trying to get up on its own, using all kinds of different combinations of how it can place its machines to really be uh, able to be balanced, uh, balancing itself as well as, okay, there you go. So now it has balanced itself. Now it knows that it's in a sitting position. It's gonna try and get up again. You see that? I'm gonna control it this time. I'm gonna help it. There you go. So till till the robo is lying on the floor, it is always knowing that is it's not in a balanced position. It's always trying to balance itself. It's showing a behavior wherein it knows that it has to get up. Now while doing that, you'll see that it is placing its hands in a, in a different position. It's trying to, it's trying to, uh, it's trying to actually see to it that it can. Uh, I'm sorry, let me just decline this call. It's it's trying to balance itself, but always goes down because obviously I put it in such a position that you can repeatedly see it is always always behaving in a certain way. Now this behavior cannot be programmed. I can't program it to actually control in all kind of different situation it's going to be getting up in. I can't program it to actually see all different angles its uh, uh, hands and legs can take, etc. All those can't be done, right? It'll be very, very difficult to do that. You cannot program all kind of different situations. You, um, you, you will not be able to put all kind of different logic that you want to put to really be able to cover all the different situations that it should behave in when it has fallen down. Now, this is a typical situation a robot may face, by the way. So what do we do in that case? So what can be done in this case is that you can actually apply some kind of a machine learning uh, or a deep learning driven model such that its behavior becomes artificial intelligence driven, such that all different situations that it sees, it knows how to handle them. Right? Uh, let me just go and help it so it doesn't keep on doing this struggle. Let's come back to the presentation now. What you see there, by the way, is that it's looking at me all the time. Um, I've shown you one behavior of this wherein it's driven by AI, that if the robo falls down, it knows how to get up in different positions, whether it is lying face down or face up or um, you know, legs bent, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when it has to do that, how, how does it go about it? So let me just show you a little presentation about what's happening inside of it. Let's go a little this side. Okay, there we go. So now uh, there, there are different types of robots that you'll see uh, out there. Um, currently you can see dependent as well as autonomous robots. So for example, the one on you see on the left side on your screens is a dependent robot wherein uh, somebody is actually controlling it, right? It doesn't have an autonomous behavior. On the other hand, there are uh, robots that are uh, working in a car manufacturing plant which are actually uh, autonomous. They know exactly what to do in different situations, different angles when the car frames are moving through the line. And somewhere in between obviously is the mass rover type, which is obviously getting controlled from the earth stations by different program uh, payloads that are being sent to it, but which do, do have a feature of autonomous inside it. Um, in, a, in a similar vein, you have uh, fixed and mobile robots. So, so th there are robots that actually work at one place, um, then obviously um, there, there are others like this UAV, which can fire a missile, which are mobile robots, right? They, they're not fixed. And somewhere in between the bricklaying robo is, which is fixed in the sense it's um, stationary in a line, but it's moving obviously because it's moving uh, across a, a wall to lay the bricks. Um, then obviously there are robo which are thing facing. So the, the car uh, example that I showcased you is a thing facing kind of a robo. 
Um, but but you will have uh, more and more cases where you'll see human facing robot. So what you see there is uh, um, another version of a robo uh, manufactured by the same company called uh, Pepper. Pepper is a human facing robot which actually can interact with humans. Uh, then there's the other types. There's predictable. So you know exactly what task they have to do. They are always repeatedly doing the same task. So manufacturing uh, robots or welding robots or, or, or robots which are uh, of, of a class which have to do repeatedly the same task are a predictable uh, uh, class of robot. But then there are social robots. And that's where you will see the now uh, robo uh, image being so shown, which is actually uh, having to deal with situations wherein different humans have to uh, uh, um, uh, be in touch with it. And when, when you uh, have humans facing you, you need to be able to interact with them both by voice um, in a visual medium as well as by actions, right? So, so you have predictable, you have social, and in between you have responsive, which is somewhere predictable, but somewhat social. Computers somehow come into that kind of a range. Um, then obviously there are biologically organized, which are more about movements as to how uh, robots can achieve uh, biological movements. And then there are uh, symbolically um, uh, organized, which actually have to deal with humans instead of biological movement, their social movements have to be much better. Their, their interactions have to be much better. Um, you know, some robots are based on thin client, which is um, you know, just um, bare bones kind of an operating system kind of thing, running their very, very bare bone kind of a behavior that they can have. And then obviously there are thick clients, um, which uh, um, uh, something like the Atlas Robo uh, made by Boston uh, Dynamics can actually have all the processing happening, all kind of situation that they can deal with, whether it is related to movement, whether it is related to interactions, all of those can be dealt by it. Um, what we see is moving forward, the robots will be uh, used in different kind of uh, avatars, different kind of use cases. So for example, they can be used as a cobot. Uh, cobot is where, um, um, for example, in manufacturing industries, uh, some of the car manufacturers are actually using cobots where um, while the person is actually doing the major work, you will actually have a cobot who will be helping uh, the person in the manufacturing industry giving uh, um, different tool sets, for example, you can ask the robot, give me the, this tool, uh, give me this screwdriver, etc. Then you would actually see them in, in, um, in hotels, in, in uh, malls, etc., where they'll be uh, doing uh, more of a concierge role where you could be asking them directions, you could be asking them where important facilities are, where's the elevator, etc. They, um, they obviously are being introduced in retail stores. I've heard that Walmart has robo, but not the humanoid form. But, but more of a, a, a form to organize their stuff. But soon you will actually start seeing robots being there in the retail stores where uh, they would essentially be able to interact with you and uh, customize uh, their behavior based on what you ask them. So for example, they could be asking, do you want to build a snowman and can I help you with that? One area which is actually catching up a lot is elder care, right? Um, especially, well, um, you know, um, in, in um, uh, old age homes and, and, and when uh, um, old people are hospitalized, um, the humanoid robots are gonna be used for elder care where they'll be uh, not only be able to answer their queries around how their health is, et cetera, but they will also be able to be with them, help them out, read them stories, interact with them, et cetera, right? Um, obviously, um, um, you, you have uh, transportation scenarios where robots are being used. Uh, um, especially on uh, uh, International Space Station. One version of uh, a robo which is powered by IBM Watson is actually um, uh, there with the astronauts uh, doing all of uh, interactions with them. So you'll see them uh, in space usage as well. Uh, you have them in, uh, um, as a companion, uh, pretty soon you will have a digital avatar in the form of a robo which will actually be able to play games with you. You keep hearing uh, uh, all, all kind of uh, game abilities that uh, uh, machine learning and deep learning models are developing, they will eventually be lending up in some form where in, in future probably robots will be playing a game with you. Um, robots are also being uh, seen as, as an independent and neutral observer um, as well as uh, uh, opinion maker in the boardroom now. There, there are experiments that are happening where people have started actually putting a robo in a boardroom to uh, give a neutral rule. Uh, manufacturing, obviously, I've uh, talked to you and showed uh, the kind of robots that are getting used in manufacturing. Um, 
Now, between uh, all the kind of rovers that, that are out there, which are popular, the one you see there in the image, the, the red one, you're actually seeing a live version of it. It's called Now. Then obviously there are other ones uh, that are being um, you know, popular, especially the one uh, um, at the uh, right side bottom that you see. This is become a pretty um, popular robo. Um, it's been given, I believe, the uh, citizenship of Saudi Arabia, I believe. Uh, and and um, they, they are kind of catching up uh, as, as humanoid robots. Um, the most important thing that a humanoid robot has to have is this. It should be able to look at text, should be able to process audio, should be able to process vision, should be able to actually know your emotion, and it should be able to do motion. But more importantly, it should be able to physically interact with you. When you are able to do all of this uh, together in a coherent way, that's when you'll actually get socially intelligent robots and that's what now is now has the ability to actually look at text it has the ability to actually process audio it can do a speech to text it has the ability to actually process vision because it has cameras and uh, you know it can see through that it is able to uh, make out emotions um, and we can actually train it to uh, learn more and more emotions it obviously does motion uh, the way i showed you uh, when it was lying down it was trying to get out um, it can certainly do physical interaction that when it talks to you, it can actually be uh, talking to you in, in a way um, that um, it can not only talk to you, it can actually be waving its hand um, in, in an expressive way uh, towards you. Now, um, the, the, the thing where we stand today, uh, if you look at the chart here, is where do humans excel and where do cognitive systems which are driving the robots excel? is that humans are supposed to have common sense, moral imagination, compassion, et cetera. But where the robots will become more and more important, more and more intelligent is they can locate knowledge very, very fast because they will have a digital way of locating knowledge and they can search it faster than us. They obviously can be trained to eliminate bias. They can be neutral that way. They can recognize pattern much, much better and faster than humans and especially at scale. They can do machine learning. They can do uh, natural language processing and they have endless capacity. Uh, they, they, they can be working 24 by 7 till their motors. By the way, the current problem the robots face is their motors get heated up. Uh, um, I'll just skip this um, and actually cover what does this robot have. Let me just do that. Okay. Now, this robot essentially is a human uh, robot developed by SoftBank Robotics, uh, which uh, um, is, is uh, funding a company called Eldebaran in France. Um, it can play multiple different roles, but most importantly, hospitality and a companion is the, the most uh, uh, important roles that uh, this robo plays nowadays. It's actually deployed in a few hotels in US already. Uh, so, some of the hospitals are also experimenting uh, with, with deploying this. Um, it's not supposed to replace a human, but it's supposed to complement humans in certain uh, uh, codes we're going to do. Now, what, what all does it have? It has uh, all these different machines. So if you look at the, the uh, diagrams on the right, it can, its, it's hands have free movement in all different directions. So it can um, move them um, using motors inside, which are driven by the battery uh, in all kinds of different uh, uh, directions to actually produce human-like movements. It has a, a way to really process emotion, uh, voice recognition, uh, it has camera to actually process uh, vision. It, it runs on Linux. Um, uh, it has um, a battery, but more importantly, it can connect to network using Wi-Fi. So for example, right now it is connected to my home network uh, using a Wi-Fi. So uh, you remember I showed you those, those are certain capabilities that a uh, robot should have to be able to uh, behave like a humanoid. So it has sensors which allow it to do movement. It, it can process sound, it can process vision and um, it can do communication with uh, humans as well as through Wi-Fi. Um, its head uh, is actually um, is, is processing uh, using uh, Linux, uh, a flavor of uh, Linux called Naoqui. Uh, that, that's the, the uh, derivation of Linux that's running inside. Um, 14 motors and 30 different sensors are there. It has a large battery which essentially allows it to actually operate without charging for close to two to three hours stay. Obviously connectivity is there. And in some cases you can actually have a, a tablet um, 
in in its chest area to uh, be able to display uh, what you're interacting with it. Um, um, there is a way to program this, and I'm going to jump into that straight away, such that you can actually program an AI behavior inside of a robot. Um, you can actually program using Python, you can program using Java, or, 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 or if you actually want to change some of the core uh, objects that are inside of the robot, you can actually write the uh, uh, core objects or extended core objects in C++. But more, m most importantly, you can actually program it using Python and C or Java. Uh, one, one of the newer extensions that has come in, you can also program some of the APIs using JavaScript. Uh, it, it has something called an autonomous life mode wherein a certain set of behaviors are inside of it. And it knows that when humans come near it, how does it need to behave, et cetera, et cetera. It has all that. Uh, behaviors have to be coded inside, right? And they have to be scripted inside of it. So if it has to have a behavior for dancing, we have to code the behavior and script that inside. And that's where I you know, hold on to that thought and I'll talk about why uh, AI will be needed there. Um, and similarly, robo movements um, and synchronization, everything is coded inside of it. And all this coding is what makes a, a combined behavior. So, so you can have behavior for dancing, behavior for interaction, behavior for welcoming somebody, behavior when it falls down, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the robots are driven by behaviors and behaviors drive their action. The thing today is that a lot of this has to be coded, but more importantly, you cannot code for all the situation, right? You've seen some of those Boston uh, Dynamics robots that um, uh, are uh, learning to jump on objects, play football, uh, run, tackle uh, obstacle, etc. cetera. Uh, if you have to do that, you cannot program all kinds of different situations that will be thrown at it. So you should be able to actually use a mechanism such that it can deal with all different uh, uh, situations that occur. Now, the biggest or the best way of dealing with that is a deep learning or a machine learning approach, such that whatever data comes through its sensors, it has a way to be able to deal with th those data points in, in different varieties um, through, through a uh, uh, deep learning or a machine learning model that allows us to put all of those together into a behavior which is driven by an artificial intelligence system. So um, with that, let me actually show you one of those behavior. Let me just put it down. Okay, there we go. So now you can see that it is actually looking at me um, and you can see the camera view that it has. Um, and so let's, let's do one thing here. Uh, before I actually um, show you this, let me show you how you actually program it today. How, uh, how you program it is, uh, especially for this robot, uh, is through a tool called choreography. You're seeing the uh, snapshot of that tool right now. It's called C H O R E G R A P H E choreography, wherein you can actually code a behavior using drag and drop and, and a flow kind of a, a methodology. A lot of stuff is already written in there such that you can control different sensors and what should happen when those sensors actually give different values. But more importantly, you can code your own piece inside of it uh, such that if you are good with uh, some of the coding paradigms in, in, for example, let's say Python, you can code your deep learning model inside the robot itself. So for example, if I want to do a document scan, I can just go inside of it. All these flows are different motions that uh, we can control in the robot. But um, one, when we do that, you can even, even say, you know, say something, say it in Japanese, uh, or say it in English or, or do a document scan or do, do this kind of a code. All of those things can actually be controlled inside of it. So what you're seeing is something called a behavior flow. So you have a, a behavior name that you will give it. So this is an autonomous behavior uh, name that I've given it. Inside of that, you will have multiple events that will be coming from its motors and sensors. And based on different kind of events that are generated, you will actually write all different types of behavior. So for example, um, uh, if it falls down, then uh, I, I would actually put a fall manager that controls that. I can put a dance behavior. I can put an anti-collision behavior. Let me just uh, probably blow that up for you. Got to increase the view size. Okay. 
I think I'm not able to increase the Zoom level, but I hope um, uh, all the uh, participants are able to actually see the flow that's that are being constructed here. And you probably may have questions, but uh, hold on to that. Uh, but but if I was to actually show you uh, um, things that are already built in, for example, let's say uh, motion. Uh, there are hand motion, for example, let's say um, based, based on something that you speak to the robot, you can actually drag and drop and say, how the hand should behave. So based on what you say, you can link the hands and then you can choose inside of it. There is a piece of code that's written there as to how the hand should move, left should move or right should move and how it should move, et cetera, et cetera. And based on that, so for example, you say um, action, open the hand. Should you open both the hands or should you open left hand or just the right hand? You can do that. So there is a way to program it in such a way that you uh, some of the simple stuff you can um, you know do it using uh, drag and drop on a canvas uh, for a behavior flow. But if you wanted to write a code, you could actually go inside and change this piece of code to make it very customized the way you want it. This code is written in Python. Uh, you could you could write your own uh, uh, piece in such a way that let me just delete that. Uh, you you could you could write your own piece uh, in such a way that that can be added um, as, a, as an object. You can uh, drag and drop onto the canvas such that all people who have to uh, um, basically um, uh, use uh, your library of uh, behaviors, they can actually reuse it. So for example, you can see wake up, sit down, stand up, all those, all those different kind of thing it can do out of the box. But there are cases then it will not be actually able to deal with out of the box. For example, let's say, how would it know there's a person there? How would it know there's, there, there, there is uh, uh, somebody that it can recognize there? How can you train it on the fly to learn new objects? How can you train it to uh, uh, learn a new behavior? All those can be done using a deep learning model, which can be coded inside uh, a choreography, or it can be coded using JavaScript uh, 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 app uh, that you can design. And, and on the fly, using uh, artificial intelligence, it can actually start learning behaviors rather than you coding it every time. So we're going to experiment one of those. But um, before we do that, let's just see this thing again here. Um, so here, here's what I'm going to try and do today. Um, so I'm going to feed it a game. So wherein I'm going to teach it how to fly a plane. So this can see. Uh, screens there I, and I can also I can I can take its video stream but more importantly I can send the video stream back to the robo as well and because I have a program running there which I can show you it can actually control you uh, multiple things using that program so what we're going to do right now is take a plane okay let the uh, let the plane come out this this is you know this is um, this is totally running on internet right now. There's a plane that we can control. So you see the message ready for now, robo control demo. There you go. Uh, you'll see an airplane right now. Let me just let it come up. There you see, you have a plane coming up here. I'm gonna pause it. And we're gonna change the location to Bangalore. Okay, you, there you go. So now if you see it is actually uh, showing you a location um, over Bangalore, and this is real time by the way. So if there are planes that are flying nearby, it can actually uh, take that data and actually project it here. But the plane is supposed to be flying over Bangalore right now. I'm gonna mute it. Okay, there you go. I muted it so that you don't have too much of sound being seen. Uh, okay. I'm gonna just pause it now. So you see uh, a plane is actually controlled. Uh, I, I'll tell you the uh, simple methodology that I've used it here. Let me just actually push the program. Uh, to the robot. Now what's happening is a plane is actually, uh, you know, flown in, in such a way that one, you have to maintain the horizon. You should be able to know where the, where's the horizon now. So if you see that you can see, uh, you know, 70% uh, of the view is controlled uh, by uh, uh, the horizon thing. So you can see that when Ro Robo is looking at this view and I'm pushing the video stream to Robo, it is actually making a white line here. 
right? This this broad white line is where it is separating. Above the white line is the sky. Below that is land. So that is one. Now it can actually take the readings of the plane from all the different dials that are there, so that it can control the roll, uh, the and the pitch. So uh, a plane is controlled using uh, you know the pitch and roll. Uh, conditions to turn it to make it up and uh, down etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is what the robo is seeing this is what we are seeing and black and white is what robo is seeing but more importantly while robo is seeing that it can also make out that there's an airplane in the uh, in the frame so is it's it's doing two things it's running it's actually running a, a deep learning model which is actually identifying an object called airplane but more importantly, when it identifies the airplane, it is going to identify if that object is above the horizon or below the horizon. And basically, based on that, it's going to take the readings of pitch and roll, and it's going to control the plane. So let, let's try and do that real time now. So you see the messages that are coming, uh, if you see uh, on the screen, it is trying to level the flight all the time by doing, um, so here you go. You see that it, it sees where the plane is, it's trying to always level the flight, even though you know it, it's gonna do a roll on, on its own. Um, and this is not as if I've trained the robot to be driving it autonomously and you'll see the bar appearing every time. So whenever a bar appears, it knows that there's horizon going up and down uh, let me pause it here. If, if I pause it here, you'll see a line going there. You see the white line there. It can actually make out where's the horizon. So there's a model train which actually knows um, where's the plane. There's the model that's trained to identify the horizon uh, uh, wherein it can separate out the sky as well as the, uh, as the uh, land. And it knows exactly based on that how to control. Now this is a, this is a way for us to teach the robot. So I'm gonna let it fly again. This way for us to teach a robot to, uh, um, you can see it is actually sending the command to the plane to actually uh, make it go down. So you, you can see that it, it will try to control the plane on its own in an autonomous way, wherein if it, if it is too up, it will make it go down. If it is too down, as in it is losing the horizon, it will try to uh, bring it up. Well, all this while it will, it will sometime turns it also uh, to maintain some kind of a pitch and roll to maintain some direction. Now, I'm not flying this plane. This plane is being flown by the robo right now. I can even show you, um, let me show you a different view if possible. I don't know if you are able to see that. Um, I don't know where is that view that's gone. So you've seen that it's gone up and down. Um, and I'm not sure if you guys are seeing the robo view, how robo is able to see that. I'm just trying to bring that up. Okay, there you go. So you see it's going down and it's trying to bring it up and balance it out whenever up and down, up and down. It'll keep, because obviously it's not trained with too much of data with a pilot kind of a thing. Um, what, what we're doing though um, is, is to uh, just feed the, feed the video stream uh, to the robo and let the robo process the behavior that whenever it sees the plane going up or down, what should it do with it? So this is like a, a mini autonomous way of teaching a robot to control uh, a plane. Uh, if it can control one plane, obviously multiple robots actually could be controlling multiple planes by looking at the screen though. In this case, I'm just sending the video stream to the robot. You could actually be sending, uh, 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 you can have a robot look at multiple streams and you know, control uh, parallelly multiple different planes that are flying. Or if it is not a plane, it can be uh, a UAV that it can be flying. So you see that it keeps on, you know, all the time going up, all the time coming down. Every time it is going up and down, it is uh, what it's trying to do is to control the plane. You can see that it will find the horizon. It will uh, process the horizon. It sees it down. It will try to bring it up. Um, if it is too up, it will try to take it down. Let me just pause it here. There you see, just, just so that, okay, one minute. I'm gonna bring it, let it bring it down and then I'm gonna pause it so you can see that it's processing the horizon in real time. There you see, so it's it's draw, drawing a, a, a white line on this area where I'm putting the mouse here. Every time it's actually knowing where the horizon. But more importantly, you will see 
that now it's not able to identify the airplane by the way. Now that, that's, that's a typical uh, uh, problem that occurs with deep learning models that are in, in, in existence these days that when you're training a, a deep learning model with images of airline, you may not have actually trained them with uh, uh, airplanes which are actually tilted or which are supposed to be going down, or which are about to crash and that kind of thing. So that's why, because it has not seen those images before, it's very, very difficult for it to make out what exactly it has to do in this case. It's almost tilted now. It's not able to make out there's an airplane, even though it can make out where the horizon is, right? Now, how do you solve that kind of a problem, especially in case of robots, because they have to interact and they have to know and try to deal with all kinds of situations. That's where when you marry a, a, a deep learning model with the knowledge graph representation of actions, it will actually run, uh, learn on the fly what it should do with that. And I'm going to show you uh, one example of that as well, that how can you actually uh, teach a robot to learn new objects or actions on the fly without actually having to program it explicitly, and it will be able to handle that. So uh, while we come to that, let me just hit now the uh, plane and see if it is able, oh, it's still playing with it, making it up and down, up and down. So let me just pause here, there you go. And you'll see it's, now it's able to make out where the airplane is because it's been trained on those kind of images. It can, it can see where's the airplane and it can see, and you, you'll see that in black and white. We, we're not sending, we don't need to send color images to the robot to be able to process objects. It can make them out even in black and white images, even in low light conditions. And every time it does that, it can also make out where the horizon is. So um, we're going to stop that. Uh, so those were the frames it was doing. Um, let, let's try to see if it, um, we can do something different wherein it can start recognizing people. It can start recognizing objects on the fly and we can teach it to actually deal with those objects on the fly. So I have a Python program written here um, wherein um, I, I just call it now by polling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, now Robo's video stream. I'm going to capture that video stream in a Python program and on my laptop, by the way not on the robot, but on my laptop, such that I can start identifying objects as well as faces inside that. So I have some data where I have face recognition data created for my face and a few other faces, such that it can recognize me. Uh, but when it recognizes that, it should be able to recognize text and other things, and I should be able to teach new things to it. So let's experiment with this. So now by polling. So I'm gonna run um, that program here. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna close this. Okay, so I'm gonna go into an AI driven behavior here. So there you see. You see me, okay? I'm gonna be waving at it. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be a little bit of lag when it comes to you as well as a little bit of lag when um, it gets processed. But you see there, uh, while I'm, I'm you know, putting up the hand or I'm putting both the hands, it's actually able to recognize that there's a person there, right? You see that? That is obviously based on, on a, uh, a model that it uh, already is using. But it may not be uh, knowing newer objects that we want to teach, it, right? So let me, let me bring the robot a little bit closer. Uh, there you go. Okay, and I'm not sure uh, what is the view that all of you are able to get of the robot. Okay, so you can see that. Now, more importantly, let me sit in front of the robot and see if it can recognize me. So it does see the person. It does see me. And you will see as soon as I take my face there, and I have actually kept the tube light at the back end so that it actually plays with the lighting conditions. Doing visual recognition when there are multiple different lighting conditions is very, very difficult thing to do. So let me, let me do that again. It can recognize that there's a person here, but more importantly, it can recognize that that's me. It can do a facial recognition for me in low light conditions also. But that, that's not the only thing it can do. I can, I can actually show it my ID card. There you see. It can actually make out that there's a person in the ID card. It can see that there is a text in the ID card. 
and it can even recognize me in the RD card. If you, if you, you know, sometimes it will say unknown, but you know, if I put it in front, there you go. So not only can it recognize me um, alive, it can even recognize me in a in an ID card. There you see. Now here's the thing, though. If we actually uh, take the output of uh, deep learning models and actually combine that with an uh, with a knowledge graph that kind of thing that you see here, wherein it says that, how do you define an ID card object? Do I have to teach the robot every time when it sees that this is an ID card? No. It can actually take the output of deep learning models and say, if there's a model which sees uh, an OCR uh, of IBM, if it sees a face, right? Um, and um, if it sees um, some kind of text there, right? There's a text that it has seen there then it has to learn a new concept called IBM ID card, right? That's, that's what I'm showing you. So here's the thing, it sees IBM text or logo, it sees a face there, it sees, uh, sees some text there, right? Um, and then it actually uh, will, will learn that as an ID card object. And if it combines that with IBM as the text or the logo, then it knows that it's an IBM ID card. Now, I don't have to teach this uh, you know, from the start. The robo actually can be programmed using AI to actually learn these things on the fly. So as, I, as soon as I go, go there, it can actually start doing the same thing again. Even though you will see the images are blurry, by the way. So most people have told me, you know, how can facial recognition happen in blurry images? Um, I'm showing you live that it can actually, uh, if I take it a little closer, even with blurry images and all that, it can recognize people there. Sometimes it will say unknown to me because uh, of the angles that I've kept, but most times it will actually recognize me uh, in the ID card itself. Now, now here's the thing. Similarly, if I have to make it learn different other objects apart from ID cards, I don't have to teach it from the start. I don't have to train a model from the start for robos. It's not possible for us to actually train models all the time and then take it to robo. The methodology today is being run in such a way using AI, actually you should be able to train uh, the robot for the objects. Um, let me just take this view. Um, in such a way that you can, you can train them on the fly. Should be able to train it to actually know newer objects on the fly and we're gonna try that. So let's show it this mobile, right? And let's capture those images. Right, I'll, I'm gonna give it multiple different images of different types, okay? There you go. And I'm gonna name that object as mobile. Okay, and similarly, okay, let me take another object, newspaper. Here we go. I'm gonna capture these images, you know, about 40 or so live through the camera in this app. Okay, it's still recognizing that as a person right now. So um, I'm gonna say that as a newspaper. And I'm gonna take another object here. Let's take another object. Uh, this one. So let's capture this one as well. So we'll say this is spectacle case. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna train the robot to actually recognize these on the fly. I'm just training it uh, and you see some loss functions uh, values coming there. I'll just decline that. Um, so you see that the training is, is happening on the fly. Some loss of uh, calculations are being done by the robot. Once it is done, um, we're gonna start uh, asking the robot to start classifying those things now. So let's see, I'm saying, okay, classify this now. So there you go. If you see, uh, there, there's a yellow thing that's been formed around this one, newspaper, right? It knows that they, they, what we're showing is a newspaper now. You see that? Not only that, it can even see there's text on the newspaper. Okay, let's take it off now. Let's take this thing now. Here you go. If you show this in this angle, it, it knows that this is a mobile, by the way. You can see this yellow thing here. It does that. Sometimes it'll go down because in different 
flight conditions uh, robots do get a uh, little um, confused but more, most of the times it'll know there's the mobile right and let's take this case now there you go it knows that this is a case now i have not programmed it this way i i didn't have to actually uh, write any further piece of code but what's happening is it knows that there is a person that this thing it, it it already knows that there is a person there but it also knows there is a spectacle case there um, that i'm having along with the person and if i add those things into knowledge graph on it it will know it will know that whenever a person is actually showing this object kind of a thing it's probably a case if it is being shown like this um, with this kind of thing it's probably a newspaper you see that right if i show you it the mobile it it will learn that on the fly okay uh, this way i have trained it this way there you go i don't have to program it explicitly to do any of that but there you go so it can actually learn it on the fly so this is the concept wherein instead of actually uh, a robo actually having to know everything from the start it will actually be able to learn using ai on the fly and it can learn the concepts on the fly so this is where i not only am i actually teaching it the new objects on the fly using ai but i can also teach it the concepts on the fly that whenever you see a person and if the first person is recognized by you and it is showing you certain let's say id card then probably you say hi to them because it knows the person it can say hi uh, with with, uh, with that specific name similarly you can you can have a robo program for all different kinds of behavior right now uh, it can do all kind of complex things it can learn new objects on the fly using ai uh, it can actually even fly a plane the, the way i showed you in a rudimentary way it could fly a plane control it using horizon and pitch and roll kind of fundamentals it can uh, even drive a car for that matter um, if if you actually teach it not to say physically actually control the steering and all that but it could actually give directions to the car uh, uh, based on what it can learn it can similarly it can learn all the different environments it can learn the different objects that are there in the environment it can know the uh, it has radar in its uh, head such that it can know the distance of different objects by actually uh, uh, beaming them and actually finding uh, how much is different it can actually pick up things there are fundamentally if you look at these building blocks there are multiple things a robot can do when driven by ai um, because i don't have to script it uh, that's the power that ai gives it because i don't have to actually teach it everything i i can teach it concept the way we uh, teach to uh, kids that's the same way a humanoid robot can actually look at object learn the concepts and based on concepts it knows how to behave when it sees those concepts that's the whole fundamental behind how you can actually program a robot using ai since uh, we just 10 minutes um, um away from the uh, close of the webinar probably i'll stop this now and probably want to take uh, some questions that are there uh, let me just stop this okay um aaron and team probably will uh, just 10 minutes will have uh, questions being taken and answer them so um, i'm going to open the okay, which algorithm so there's one question um, which algorithm is being uh, used to uh, do a facial recognition actually if you guys search for a uh, uh, py image search py uh, image search and you do a uh, facial recognition along with that uh, if you combine those terms and search for it you will actually find the piece of code there excellent piece of code that actually tells you how you can do uh, facial recognition uh, using face uh, encodings on the fly so that's that's question number 1 any other question that are open there um, that people want to ask you may probably want to type them here <coughs> i see that few people have um questions uh um i do know there's a poll thing i'll just going to bring it down how this will be used for software it arena good question well actually uh, what we've been thinking is um uh, you you can introduce these robots uh, in some of the banks 
I do know the same row is actually um, um, is there in, in the Kenra Bank branch in MG Road in Bangalore. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and, uh, and what we know is this could be used to actually do, uh, you know, interaction with you when you come to a bank, for example, it can actually tell you about different schemes that are there, tell you about different forms that you have to fill. But more importantly, if you use AI along with it, it can also learn to identify different documents and actually do an OCR uh, of the image of the document actually help you fill the form. So you can digitally fill a form and then you can probably cross check and submit it. So it can do that faster. It can do loan processing faster for you. At least the, the identification of document and, and filling up the form part, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the IT part of it. Um, there's a question as the Lobo, key, uh, Lobo keeps learning, would it need more and more memory to save knowledge? Ah, good question, pretty good question. Uh, the question is that uh, as the robot keeps learning, would it uh, need to save it in the memory or it, there's, a, there's a way to manage that? Now, what, what we have to do is we do not have to actually store everything in the memory, but represent everything it learns as a knowledge graph. A knowledge graph you can actually see as nothing but uh, uh, probably, how do I equate it? A, a graphical database, right? You can actually store everything it learns into a graphical database so that at runtime and looks at objects, looks at different concepts uh, and, and correlation between those objects and uh, concepts, then it can actually behave differently based on that. So it doesn't need to store them, but it actually needs to represent the knowledge somehow. Uh, what's the other question? Uh, can we have a list of protocols that we are using here to communicate? Uh, well, in my case, I'm, I'm communicating through the Wi-Fi, so my laptop uh, is connected to the same Wi-Fi hotspot hot as the robot is connected, and that way uh, we can control it. You can obviously uh, have a wired connection to the robot as well. Um, uh, what are the basic technology we should learn for the? Oh, so the basic technology that you should be learning is one is one of the uh, programming languages, either Java or Python. Second, uh, some amount of uh, uh, deep learning or machine learning, so that you can use those models and actually load them them up or program them inside of the robo. So I'm not saying you need to develop uh, deep learning models. There are many, many uh, deep learning models that are out there that you can use with a robo, but you should know how to program uh, or use a deep, existing deep learning model using one of these languages along with the robo behavior. So that's what you need to know for robo uh, technology. Uh, what is the level of precision? If it is physical, uh, uh, Precision we are talking about for this robot physically obviously the the movements are not not that fine grained as to you know you, it, it can actually let's say um, you know put a thread through a pin or something of that sort but obviously uh, for interactivity part uh, the precision is good so for example if you extend the hand it can recognize where a hand is and it can hand over something to you so that is the kind of pre precision that this robot has from a physical manifestation point of view. But from processing your image and audio, obviously it is as good as any technology out there. Uh, from interactivity, you know, processing your audio, processing your video, and processing any other different kind of signals based on its sensors. Can we use robots in agriculture? Yes, certainly, um, uh, but not in a humanoid form. There are uh, uh, robots being used uh, in agriculture through a, a tractor form, so wherein for large cultivable areas, you don't have to have humans driving those tractors. The tractors can be powered by machine learning or AI kind of a, a scenario, such that um, the, the control of the tractor can be done uh, using uh, something like the way we're controlling the robot. What are some of the popular deep learning libraries in JavaScript? TensorFlow.js. That's the most uh, uh, popular that's catching up now. So you can actually use TensorFlow.js as a JavaScript library for deep learning. Um, how cybersecurity issues are handled here? If it is about how do we communicate with Robo, how do we control the data? It can happen. It happens through HTTPS uh, as far as this control goes, and you can put your own encryption on, on top of that if you really want to uh, do that. Uh, so um, that is taken care of the the normal way that you will take care of HTTPS. Uh, how do we how can we use AI for data mining? What is the process? That's very open-ended, but you can use AI for data mining by actually uh, having the data classified into different categories. And after classification, you can map it to a knowledge graph to actually make sense out of it um, in, a, in a simple way. That, that's how I can simplify the process. But you know, it's a very broad question how you do you deal with data uh, in AI. 
Uh, so which algorithm will be suitable for AI chat tool speech recognition? Well, speech recognition can be uh, RNN and LSTM based. Plus, there, there are newer research that's been done on top of that, how, how you can uh, do a transfer learning from earlier speech recognition models and, and learn newer models together. But, but RNN and LSTM should be a, a way to go for uh, speech recognition models. Um, blockchain uh, concepts included in this? No, there's no blockchain concept, at least at this point of time in the robo. Uh, is it security by cognitive security? Uh, we can actually put cognitive security if we really want to put in there, but this demo purposes, we are not used that way. You could, you could have cognitive security if you want to do that. Can you show a demo now replying to a question? Oh, I can do that, but um, you know, I, I didn't want to do that specifically for this because it purely becomes a speech to text kind of thing. I, did, I wanted to show more abilities around how you can control its behavior physically, uh, um, as well as uh, through visual and other processing, but probably at a later point of time, if possible, I can show you how now can actually interact with people and, and do uh, uh, speech recognition, et cetera, et cetera. Can we get a customized document for programming in robotics? Uh, and also Python. Um, I, so let me answer this question. Is Python sufficient for it? Yes, I found it to be sufficient for programming the robot as well as deep learning. Um, but I didn't get the question, what do you mean by customized document for programming? How large is the data set that is usually required to get a good precision? On, on, on a robo, if you use uh, 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 the methodology of uh, transfer learning, then I, as I showed you, you don't need more than 40 or 100 images of a type of a, of a, a category to really be able to identify on the robo. So it should be able to recognize probably within 40 to 50 images and, and uh, it works with that. So uh, you don't need really, really uh, huge data to be able to teach the robo newer objects. Uh, it's, it's a very good question uh, you know, that's been put in there. How can robot distinguish if a person is real or photo? Um, there's actually a way to really find out if the person is real. One is obviously when you see a person there within the person frame, you should see the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the face uh, uh, or the facial recognition within the person frame. But more importantly, there should be, there, there is a way to calculate liveliness of, of a facial recognition system. So you may want to just search for liveliness of a facial recognition system. There's a humongous amount of research that has happened for it. Some, some, some of the approaches are based on a 3D model. Some of the approaches are based on a movement versus face correlation, et cetera. But there is a way to find liveliness of a person to really know if the face is of a, a, a real person or a photo. Uh, uh, so the question uh, is, do we have to give, a, uh, how do we give new command uh, uh, if we have to write new behavior? Here's the thing though, you can actually write a behavior that can actually deal with newer situation by self-learning the way I was showing the code. The behavior can control that whenever it sees new object, it can ask you and you can reply. Okay, uh, so for example, it can ask you what, what are you holding in your hand? And you can say, I'm holding a mobile. So you'll know that it's a mobile and it can click pictures and it can learn. So objects and concept, it can learn through a behavior. But let's say if you want a drastically different behavior, um, which is about, let's say, uh, you know, dancing. We can't teach it dancing by showing new objects, right? In that case, we'll have to write a new behavior. Uh, somebody has written a question, TensorFlow available for Python also? Yes, certainly it is available for Python also. Um, any thoughts on AI uses for industrial sectors? Um, you'll be surprised that AI pretty soon, uh, some of the robots that are available for, from Boston Dynamics are actually available for industrial usage. So you may want to search for that Boston Dynamics robo for industrial usage. Um, I don't know if uh, anything is being used for security because there is no paradigm that's been set that if you <coughs> Excuse me, if you use a robot for security, um, how do you control that? So as of now, we don't see too many being used for security because there is a human interaction that has to happen where serious consequences can be there. Can we have a deep learning model implemented? <coughs> Sorry, on edge devices? Yes, certainly. You can actually have a Raspberry uh, Pi device or there are other devices uh, launched by different vendors where you can run a um, deep learning model on the edge device itself. Uh, we hear a lot of AI improving 
Martech. Um, that's a question, uh, Rupali. I don't know what exactly do you mean by Martech. You may want to uh, expand that, then I can answer that. Can this robot be integrated with what IBM Watson? Most certainly. I work for IBM and we have integrated this robot with IBM Watson such that the, the core uh, Linux operating system of this itself was modified to actually be able to work directly with IBM Watson embedded inside. Some of the capabilities can be embedded inside today if you want to. ARML, which is better suit for care? Uh, ML is better to start with. Uh, AI actually, so there, there's no, uh, no way to say that you should start with only AI or ML. You actually start with ML. Once you are good with machine learning, then when you actually bring in knowledge graph and other things, then, then actually uh, um, this, this can become uh, AI uh, kind of a career path. Oh, um, I think Rupali has answered MarTech is marketing technology. I think what was your question? Uh, AI is improving marketing technology, uh, blogs or books. Um, I'm really not aware of any good book that may be there for it, but you may want to uh, you know, read upon how uh, IBM is trying to improve uh, uh, digital marketing uh, using Watson. Uh, you will actually find a few blogs using that. So search for I, uh, IBM Watson digital marketing uh, improvisation. I think we are over time now. Uh, um, um, participants, thanks for your time. I think I will have to close now. Cannot go on further. Um, I'm going to stop the video. Um, um, Aaron and team, I think I need to sign off now. Uh, uh, all the participants, thanks for your time. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks for the wonderful session. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We will uh, though share the uh, recordings uh, as soon as possible. And please visit uh, springpeople.com for more uh, tech webinars and R&D webinars. Thank you again.